Okay, thank you very much. Um, the, the advantage of the uh, two previous speakers speaking for 15 rather than five minutes each is that uh, Tad and I will be very brief, and uh, that, of course, is a good example of complexity, how the following actions are contingent on those that have gone before. Uh, so let me be brief and uh, quickly speak to some of the things that are coming out of the uh, Oxford Martin School, where we are trying to learn across many different areas, pandemics, climate change, uh, cosmology, uh, interestingly enough, how you find through very complex systems and very weak signals indicators that may help you think about the future. The very significant thing about this experience we've been through is that I hope it's taught us all uh, that the best minds in the best institutions can't predict the future. Uh, this has always been the case, as you'll know from the uh, predictions of the great intellects over invention, uh, over politics, and of course of journalists. But it's even more the case now because the pace of connectivity uh, and of complexity has greatly increased over the last 20 years. What we need to internalize is that the world is very, very different uh, in this period since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the opening up of capital markets, the decline in tariffs, uh, and the end of dictatorships in over 65 countries. There's something like 100 countries that have come into the world economy uh, over the last 20 years with a level of connectivity of people around the world, and of course there are two billion more of them, uh, is something like 10 times greater than it was uh, 20 years ago, depending on obviously the metrics you're using. And this is not only between countries, it's also within countries, so that 80% of the world's population is less than two hours from a major city now. Very different metrics you can use uh, to see how this change has occurred, and i just give you some quick snapshots of some of them. This is just the capital flows, uh, and you see how from 1990, although very unstable since then, different orders of magnitude. And of course, if you put trade up, you would get something 10 times this, but a similar sort of pattern. The portfolio is investments, obviously, bond and equity flows. If you look at the measures of uh, integration, so this is openness and restrictive measures, you see this trend carrying on. And if you look at the long-term story, you just see how different this recent period of globalization has been. And very significantly, for the first time for about a thousand years, and that of course was also a period of great coming together of Islamic and Christian and other civilizations, you see this phenomenal ability of income growth to exceed population growth, although both are very rapid. And of course, you see the scales there. Uh, the question is, can we sustain it? Now, behind a lot of this is the advances in technology, so that the, the speed of connectivity through computing, something like 100,000 times faster today than 1990 for the same price, and that is increasing at Moore's Law and will continue to do so over the next uh, 20 years. So what we were interested in is the super spreading and the structure of networks, how the different structures are developing, what the critical nodes are, and what lessons we can take away from that. Let me just quickly flip to the, the five lessons that, I, that we've taken away from the uh, financial crisis and I'm working on in the book I'm working on now on superconnectivity, complexity, and systemic risk. The first is that the structure of surveillance uh, of regulatory structures did not in any way take into account not only the homogeneity with individuals all offsetting their risks to the same place, but then just simply doing this on an additive basis. It is not an additive process, and the linkages become extremely important. Understanding these nodes and understanding the characteristics of the new structure. So understanding the topology and the drivers within it. And you can only analyze these nodes if you really have the data sources uh, at disposal. And that's why the sorts of things that are beginning to happen now with new data sources are important. But of course, there's a data deluge, and so finding the signals becomes extremely important. Systemic analysis of the nodes and the feedback loops is absolutely critical. 
The second major lesson, of course, is that the governance structure is totally unfit for purpose. National surveillance is meaningless unless it's linked to global, and that market prices and other sorts of signals are not going to in any way reveal the underlying risks, and they, they indeed might do the opposite. They might create self-reinforcing tendencies uh, in the sort of way that George has referred to in reflexivity. The absence of an understanding of these networks and structures uh, leads to the building up of these very, very significant pressures over time. So it's this need for both very local knowledge to understand what's happening as well as very, very significant high-level knowledge. The extent of technological innovation is absolutely crucial behind this. The crisis would not have happened without the revolution on technology, both in the speed of transmission and the development of instruments, the spread around the world, and of course that's part of the globalization story, but also the innovation, the ability of the market to be in fact invented by great physics and maths graduates uh, that did not have a sense of the aggregative effects of what they were doing. So rational actions, development of that, and of course going with regulatory arbitrage, the potential because of this fragmentation of the system to arbitrage uh, at many, many different levels. The other very significant point is that when these interconnections are very dense, it's very difficult when the speed is very rapid to ever find where the source of the, the ripple is, the source of the shock that's going to come. So it's not very, the more complex the system, the more rapid it is, the more difficult the prediction ahead of time, let alone ex post, of these big structural collapses. The other development, of course, is the small world problem. The fact that when you have this very dense connection, you get a lot of short circuiting going on, and that is, again, something that the regulators need to worry very deeply about. The fourth lesson is that behind all of this, in addition to the sort of neoclassical driving ideological forces that we've been discussing over the Sinet conference, is also things happening in management theory which are in parallel to that. Just in time, mark to market, are very, very significant. The homogeneity of over a million MBAs coming out of the world now a year driving the same types of just-in-time sweat your assets, whether it's your liquidity on your bank balance sheet, whether it's your stocks uh, in your factories, or whether it's your oxygen bottles in your hospitals, is absolutely crucial. These are regarded as liabilities. Resilience is seen as a liability in the system. And unless we get a complete rethinking of the management theory behind this, the mark-to-market -market structures, we will not be able to build resilience into a theory. Resilience does have a cost. Uh, sustainability of economic systems is in contrary to this homogeneity being driven through the management system. So what economists are doing in their theories, um, the neoclassical variety, is absolutely mirrored in the management structures. And we need to ensure that as we're driving this, we also think about how this will play through into the markets. We have to eliminate the idea that idle capital is somehow bad capital. Idle capital is extremely significant and facilitates resilience and stops contagion. How much, of course, is critical and how you build that in a system which is driving competitively is absolutely crucial. And the final point, which is the most obvious one, uh, is that the modern financial systems are totally unfit for purpose. They are unable not only to understand the system, but also to bring these different pieces of it together at the national and global level and to begin to help us find the right conclusions. Thank you. Thank you.